I'm Bill Weiss, host of Dairy Nutrition Black Belt. Uh, my guest today is Dr. Dave Casper, who's senior dairy nutritionist for Ralco, and he's also the owner of Casper's uh, Calf Ranch, which is a facility designed to do calf nutrition research. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, Bill. Glad to be um, here. Okay. Um, today, I thought we'd talk about a, a study you did looking at Monansin versus uh, another additive, a co- an additive that has cobalt, a mineral, oregano <laughs> essential oils blended into the calf starter. Um, on this research, Dave, why don't you first all start, what was the objectives of the experiment? The, the objectives were actually to evaluate the product with the essential oils in it because we had some inclinations that we were seeing a shift in ruminal fermentation as calves came on to feed or switch or transition from milk replacer or milk to calf starter to dry feed. And we've seen that these shifts in fermentation were analogous to root monensin. So we set this study up to evaluate the essential oil product compared to monensin in a two by two factorial. And we used several calves and we took them out to 70 days of age. And the, the treatment started at, at basically at birth or after weaning? Uh, they started at birth. So okay. so the calf starters were formulated to be fed as they made that transition from whole milk to dry feed. Okay. And so there was whole milk and then starter, or was it replacer, whole milk? Whole milk. Okay. This, one, this one was whole milk. Okay. Um, and then on the treatments, you had a control, obviously, with nothing, no added, no additives in the starter. And then Monansen, uh, could you describe briefly the, the product, without a commercial name, but the product, <laughs> uh, what the product is designed to do? The product is designed to be a replacement for, uh, in my opinion, antibiotics, because the essential oils are antibacterial, antifungal, um, antiviral. And like I mentioned, we had seen some preliminary data that showed a shift in ruminal fermentation. Plus, we had seen an advantage from our previous research in just milk replacer that we had got some nice growth responses. So we were looking at this in the calf starter because the animals on this particular research location were fairly challenged from a pathogen standpoint. And so the objective was then to use to get these calves on to feed faster if we could or transition them quicker. And so the cobalt is a organic cobalt source. Cobalt lactate is the actual chemical. And then the essential oils uh, based on oregano and then also a, uh, an oligosaccharide product that's based on arabinose. And so that combination then we were looking at how well it would do compared to momentum from a growth rate feed efficiency standpoint. And when whenever I read papers and there's a factorial, I, you know, factorials are designed mainly because of the interaction. Um, what what interaction were you hypothesizing would happen? We were thinking that the shift in ruminal fermentation plus all the anti-properties that this product would have would actually be synergistic or additive with monensin. Again, propionic acid, those calves get that absorbed. It would get made to glucose in the liver. And then, of course, you get that increase in growth rate and feed conversions that we typically see with monensin. So we thought they would be additive or synergistic. Okay. Uh, why don't you give us a, a brief over, overview of, of what you found? I know, so let's start with growth data. We've seen an increase in growth with the essential oil product. We've seen an increase in growth with the monensin product, but realistically, they were not additive. Mm-hmm. And so they both were accomplishing basically the same thing, but they were not additive. Okay. The, the, the interesting thing in that study is, is we actually got better growth rates and performance with the essential oils compared to the monensin. And so our growth rates were increased, you know, about 8% in body weight gain. Yes, we got a growth rate with uh, Monensin as well, but uh, we also got an increase in the calf starter intakes. But again, the feed conversions were very similar of the Monensin compared to the, the essential oils, which were better than the control. So we've seen that in that study. So again, Monensin's working fine. I'm not trying to badmouth monensin, but 
my opinion is, is that the essential oils bring that response to the calf, but it also brings more. Okay. Do you think the, the growth what you think was primarily because they ate more then? Yes, I do. Because we did some digestibility measurements and they were pretty similar to numerical advantages. Do, do you have any ideas why they ate more? What's your hypothesis on the, the intake stimulation? I think it's actually helping some with uh, getting the microbial population in the rumen going. And then, of course, you got, uh, you know, VFA absorption across the rumen wall. And again, if you got better digestion in the rumen, then they got room to eat more feed. Kind of going back to that concept that the the room is only so big. (laughs) Well, as a mineral guy, I have to ask, what's the what do you think the cobalt is doing? Uh, our work from after that study actually shows that the cobalt is stimulating enzyme production by the rumen microorganisms. Okay. So in other words, in our other studies, we've seen an increase in like cellulase, amylase, hemicellulases. And so that's what the cobalt is doing is stimulating okay. those microbes to actually produce more exoenzymes for ruminal digestion. Um, just again, because I'm a mineral guy, did you do anything with B12? Did you look at B12 status of the calves? Could that also be uh, involved? If In theory, it could be, but we did not look at okay. B12 status, okay. Um, okay. unfortunately. But yeah, I can certainly rationalize that out like you could. That that be, Because the one thing I think you both, you and I know is, is that cobalt carbonate as a trace mm-hmm. mineral has very low solubility in the yeah. rumen. This cobalt lactate is going to be 100% soluble in the rumen, so you have much more cobalt available to stimulate those rumen microorganisms. Okay. And then, um, again, this was only done during weaning and then a few weeks afterwards. Do you think this is something they should continue all for you know months and months after birth, or you think you got most of the bang for the buck? the way you did did the experiment? I think we got most of the bang for the buck. We do have another paper that might be worth another uh, discussion some point down the road because in a follow-up of the, in the grower phase of a program, we actually seen some antagonisms between the essential oil and monensin. Okay. And we don't fully understand the mechanism behind that yet. And, there's other studies out there to show that this antagonism does not exist, but our data showed that there is an antagonism because what actually happened in that follow-up study in the grower phase, the it was a two-by-two two factorial as well. The essential oils did better than the control. The monensin did better than the control. But when we put the two of them together, it actually did worse than the control. Okay. And that paper is also published in the Journal of Dairy Science. Well, we, one of these days, you might, might have another one of these to discuss that. But. Yeah. At a sale, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M. Visit MilkPay.com to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids. And to learn how Smart Amine M is the product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, component levels, and the lifetime performance of their herds. Thank you again for your time. This is this has been interesting. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Weiss. It's been a pleasure. Mm-hmm.